Hello, financial accounting students. I want to take a couple minutes to talk about the price earnings ratio, usually called the PE ratio, and help you get a better understanding of it and how it applies to your group project. Um, first, we're looking at slides from the very end of chapter 11. It talks about the PE ratio. It increases, increases in a company's stock price occur when investors believe the company's earnings will grow. Usually, not always. The price earnings ratio, frequently called the PE ratio, is the most commonly reported measure of a company's value. So we don't value a company based on their stock price. We convert it into a PE ratio to get a deeper understanding of it. And here's why. The PE ratio is a company's market price per share, so the stock price, divided by the company's annual earnings per share. So it tells you how much you're paying the market price per share to get a piece of pie, your earnings per share. And then they tell us, however, caution must be used when interpreting PE ratios. The end. Hmm. That kind of leaves me wondering. I feel like we need to explore this a little bit more. What do they mean caution must be used? So let's dig a little bit deeper. Here I am in chapter 11 of your textbook. I'm in the ebook on page 615. So this is the end of chapter 11. And it talks about the price earnings ratio. And it gives us a little more description and an example. They say, assume Western Company recently reported annual earnings per share of $3. Western stock is currently selling for $54 per share. Western stock, therefore, is at a PE ratio of 18. So they're taking $54 of market price divided by $3 of earnings per share. What does a PE ratio of 18 mean? Well, if Western continued earning $3 per share of stock each year um, uh, and paid out all its earnings to stockholders in the form of cash dividends, it would take 18 years for an investor to recover the price paid for the stock. Hmm. So in that context, a higher P.E. ratio would mean that it would take longer to recover the price that you paid for the stock. So they say, in contrast, assume that the stock of Eastern Company reported earnings per share of $4 and is currently selling for $48 per share. So again, we compute the P.E. ratio by taking the market price of 48 divided by earnings per share of 4, and we come up with a P.E. ratio of 12. So investors who buy Eastern Company stock would get their money back six years faster than investors who buy Western stock, right? So a PE, of, PE ratio of 18 at Western versus 12 at Eastern. Um, so if they paid everything out in the form of cash dividends, a higher PE ratio would mean that it's going to take longer to recuperate that initial investment. So it goes on. Why would investors buy a stock with a P.E. ratio of 18 when they could buy one with a P.E. ratio of 12? If investors expect Western companies' earnings to grow faster than Eastern companies' earnings, the higher P.E. ratio then makes sense. For example, suppose Western companies' earnings were to double to $6 per share while Eastern's remained at $4 per share. Western's P.E. ratio would then drop to 9, meaning $54 of market price divided by $6 of earnings per share, while Eastern's would remain at 12. This explains why high-growth companies sell for higher P.E. multiples than do low-growth companies. Uh, that's a little bit confusing. That's a lot to digest there. So then they go on again to say caution must be used when interpreting P.E. ratios. A company can have a high P.E. ratio due to very low earnings rather than high optimism by investors. For example, a company's EPS is 0 0.02, so two cents of earnings per share. I mean, that's almost nothing. And its stock is selling for 50 cents, it will have a PE ratio of 25, which is high. Hmm, that's not that high. In this case, the high PE ratio is the result of very low earnings, not optimism. If a company has a net loss, then a P.E. ratio is not computed. So that's an important sentence for any of you that are trying to track P.E. ratio for your companies. If this shows N.A., look at their earnings per share. Is it negative? If, if your P.E. ratio is showing N.A., it's probably due to a negative earnings per share. And then you'll need to explain that in your group project. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't choose that company 
but you need to explain why you're okay with it having a negative earnings per share last year. It might mean that there's plenty of room for the company to grow. Um, I still feel like this is kind of fuzzy. Do you know yet what's better, a higher P.E. ratio or a lower P.E. ratio? I don't feel like we've really gotten a grasp on that. Hold on. Okay, so now we're in the appendix of your textbook at the back where it has the appendix about financial ratios. And in particular, there's two from chapter 11, one obviously being the price earnings ratio, the P.E. ratio. Let's read their definition here. And this is typical of what you'll find in most textbooks and most definitions of P.E. ratio. The P.E. ratio gives an indication of how optimistic the financial markets are about the company's future earnings. The higher a company's P.E. ratio is, the more investors are willing to pay for each dollar of earnings that the company generates. Typically, investors are willing to pay this higher price because they think the company will grow in the future. Lower P.E. ratios indicate investors are less optimistic about the company's future growth. So in reading that, it kind of sounds like higher is better. Higher is an indication of more optimism, while lower is less optimism, I suppose. Um, I still think that's tricky. Let's take another look at it. Okay, so here I put some numbers together in Excel. So we know that P.E. ratio is our stock price, our market price per share of stock, divided by our earnings per share. And again, earnings per share is the company's net income divided up among all the stockholders. And I want you to think of that as your slice of the pie. Okay, so that's your slice of the pie. How much are you willing to pay for your slice of the pie? So we've got two examples here. So let's say there's a company whose stock is selling for $100 per share on the stock market, and its EPS, earnings per share, is $2. So it would have a P.E. ratio of 50. That's kind of high. It's not extremely high, but it's kind of high. But there's another company at, whose stock is now selling for $50 per share, and their earnings per share is also $2 per share. So their P.E. ratio is 25. So given a choice between these two companies, which one do you think is better? Do you want to pay $100 to get that same size 2 piece of pie? Or you can pay $50 to get that same piece of pie. So what's better? Well, to me, the P.E. ratio of 25 is better. That is a better value. Why would I spend $100 to get this slice of pie if I could just spend $50 to get that same slice of pie? Well, this is better. I like a lower P.E. ratio. Personally, I like P.E. ratios in the teens, maybe the 20s at the most. So 50 is kind of high for my taste. But what this means, this higher P.E. ratio of 50, Investors are willing to pay that higher price because they're incredibly optimistic about the company's future growth. And a lot of the stock market is driven by beliefs about future growth. The stock market is often driven by optimism. If people believe in a company, then they'll tend to invest in it. I was going to look at the P.E. ratio for Tesla for you and pull that up, but they have a negative earnings per share and therefore no P.E. ratio, yet people are still willing to buy their stock because they believe in their future growth. It's some pretty cool science that they're doing over there. They have yet to show us that they know how to make money doing it, but investors are still willing to buy their stock despite their negative earnings per share. So when we see that higher P.E. ratio, that means that the stock is a little expensive considering the amount of pie that you're going to get, but it means that there's some optimism about this company. So I took a real company to show you an example. Um, here's Amazon, and these are real numbers from today. Um, the stock, when I made this Excel file a few minutes ago, was trading around $2,380 per share, $2,380 per share and they have earnings per share of $20.94. So their P.E. ratio is 113.66. That's pretty high, right? I mean, that's a high P.E. ratio. Again, I like P.E. ratios in the teens, maybe the 20s. This is quite high. 
So people are optimistic about Amazon. Um, they're willing to pay that higher price and Amazon has proven over the years that they have figured out how to make money and their stock seems to be going up. So um, people are kind of chasing that stock, willing to buy some expensive pie. Now, these numbers here, these are kind of made up, but I remember a bunch of years ago, um, Amazon wasn't necessarily profitable. They kept coming in slightly negative in terms of their net income. And they finally turned a profit and their earnings per share was like a penny per share. Um, they were only making like a penny, maybe two cents per share. And their stock was trading around 1100. So I wanted to show you what that would look like if they have extremely low earnings per share and a relatively high stock price, look at their high PE ratio. I mean, that's insane, 115,000, right? Or if, you know, if they made two cents per share, oh, much more reasonable at only 57,500. I mean, this is an astronomical PE ratio. And so when we look at this, I don't want you to think, oh, well, higher is better. What I see is a really expensive piece of pie. Why would you be willing to pay $1,150 to buy this little tiny earnings per share that is barely out of the negative? Well, the answer is that you must be really optimistic about the company's future growth. And people were very optimistic about the company's future growth at this time. Um, internet and selling things on the internet was really taking off. And you know that, that was the way of the future. And so I think today a lot of people might feel that way about a company like Tesla. Um, well, their earnings per share is negative. The science behind it is really cool. They've yet they, they've not yet figured out how to be consistently profitable and make money doing it, but people believe in the company and they're chasing that that high PE ratio, meaning they're paying a lot of money in terms of the stock price relative to the earnings per share that they're getting. So obviously this would be an extremely high PE ratio. So going back here, if we're comparing these two, I want you to be careful in your group project. Don't, don't just tell us that higher is better. If you're gonna choose a company with a higher PE ratio, then you better explain why you're optimistic about that company. Because quite honestly, the company with a lower PE ratio is a better value. Um, so if you're not gonna buy the one with a lower PE ratio, then you need to explain where your optimism is coming from in terms of that higher PE ratio. Let me go back to stock price and PE ratio. Um, I created this earlier in terms of our visual aids for the group project. I want you to be careful with this because what I see too often is students that quickly throw together these charts and they say, oh, well, company B is an orange and they're higher on the stock price, which means they're better, and they're higher on the PE ratio, and that means they're better. Please do not rush your analysis like that. A higher stock price and a higher PE ratio by no means is better. Okay, so first of all, when we look at these PE ratios, company B has a PE ratio in the 50s, high, mid to high 50s. That's quite high. Why are you willing to pay that amount of money? So let's look at May 22nd, $34 per share for earnings per share of only 65 cents. That's a, that's a lot to pay for a little tiny sliver of pie. Where company A was trading at $14 and their earnings per share is $1.20. So their PE ratio is incredibly low. So that's definitely a better value. They've got a PE ratio around 10 or even under they finished at 11.67. That's a very low PE ratio. Um, so that's definitely a better value, but you do need to put in your thoughts about what that means in terms of investor optimism. So why would you be willing to chase company B? Why would you be willing to buy at a price that's high relative to, to the pie that you're getting, only 65 cents per share? Why are you optimistic about that company that you would be willing to buy the company with a higher PE ratio? Or if you choose company A, you need to explain, well, this is a good value. It's got a very low PE ratio, but is there a reason that maybe investors aren't optimistic about this company? What do you see in it? I see a good value, but why do you think it's a good investment going forward? But don't confuse that a higher stock price means that the company is better. 
higher stock price doesn't mean better. What we need to know is what do we get for that stock price? And that's what the P-E ratio tells us. How much pi do we get for our stock price? So careful in your analysis on your group project, make sure you guys put your heads together and really think carefully about your P-E ratio and how you're going to explain that in your group project. Let me know if you have any questions or need any help with your analysis. Good luck.